So I'm pretty much done. Uh, you know, that's, um, we talked about the unending covenant, um, the present evil age. That's the age of Moses where sin and death reigned and it was coming to an end. And, and by the way, I'll just throw this out there. Um, you know, he quoted Ephesians 6. Yeah. He says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness. Now watch. Of this age. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. So my question again is, had the age of Matthew 24, 3, that he said was fulfilled in 70 AD, already taken place when this text in Ephesians 6, 12 was written? No, it hadn't. So either he has two ages that have overlapped in the first century, both of which followed by an age to come, or he doesn't have an age to come that followed the age of Moses. I mean, he's just got problems that need to be worked out. Um, and if you guys got some questions that you want to throw at me since then, Justin Marta died. Is that his death? 165 and his dialogue with Trifle makes the comment for the prophetical gifts remain with us even to the present time. Uh, dialogue with Trifle. Um, is that 82? Okay. Thanks for supplying the um, documentation. And I have all of this. Um, the Father asks your Lord for the special gift of his inheritance, the distribution of the charism. One of the great defenders of Orthodox Christianity addressed his baptismal candles to expect the gifts he would proclaim when you come up from the most sacred bath of the new birth, when you spread out your hands. Yeah, I have the quote from Irenaeus. I have those. I didn't have the uh, the one from Justin Martyr, but thanks for giving me that reference, and I will uh, I will add that to my uh, to my list, and then uh, put that with Chrysostom, who says that the gifts had long since ceased. Any other questions? Anybody got any? Let's see. You got my husband's attention tonight. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't want to keep anybody else up. You know, I. I um, just tried to go through some of these things. I've, you know, covered um, pretty much most of them. Um, let me see. Was there anything else that he said on on Ephesians? Oh, what? Here's one thing I'd like to say about Ephesians, and that is chapter two. If you look at chapter one. Paul said in verse 10 that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times. So it wasn't just earth that God was concerned about. It was all things in heaven and on earth in him. But this was in the fullness of the times. Now, if we look at that in verse, and, and we know from Galatians 4 when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law. Well, Jesus wasn't born in the new covenant. He was born under the old covenant in the fullness of the times. But here, when you look at verse 21, it says, he was set far above all principality and power and mind dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. So we still got this age, but now let's go to chapter 2, and you'll see that it's in that age, which still has to be the age of Moses, because the temple is still standing. He says, in which you once walked according to the course of this world. Now this phrase, in the Greek, let me see if I, it might even be clear, more clear here. Uh, not the Old Testament, but the New Testament Greek. It might be more clear here. Um, yes, here it is. According to the age of the cosmos, or this cosmos. All right? So that phrase, according to the age of this cosmos... 
Now, that's why they were fighting with the principalities and powers, because they were still living in that age of Moses, where sin and death reigned, and where Satan was the god of that age, because they had yielded their um, righteousness in the garden. They had yielded up their stance with God to Satan, and so he reigned over them through death. And that's what Jesus was coming to destroy. And so the Bible says in Romans 16 at verse 20, the God of peace would crush Satan under your feet shortly. He, you know, cited the text from James saying, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Well, that was written before 70 AD. And they could resist him. So it wasn't that he was so powerful they couldn't resist him. But the point being, uh, the destruction would have been at the very time that these apostles and uh, the language of the scripture in Daniel 7, in Daniel 9, and Daniel 12 said that all of those things would be fulfilled. I mean, you know, you got the book of life right there. That's when everybody would be delivered. That's also the time that he was cast in the lake of fire. So th most of their questions, most of the questions that we get from them, well, I don't see how that happened. Well, how did this happen? Well, when did that happen, et cetera? They're not logical ar arguments that really drive the uh, premise to its conclusion that this is future. And because he started out with trying to build his foundation on these church fathers, which we've shown, you know, from Sam Frost's book, um, was very shady and shaky. I recommended that he read that book before he started out on some of that. And uh, I guess he just ignored it and chose to do it anyway. But I think if he had read it, he might not have put so much stock into the um, into those church fathers. And, you know, if not before, I can tell you this, I wouldn't put any stock in them. I'm not trying to denigrate them or anything. But my point is, I wouldn't put any stock in them compared to the scriptures with all of the conflicting um, information that they've given. Here's an interesting text. I'm just going to throw some text, you know, some charts up in front of you now just for you to see um, some of these statements that, that they made. All right, now take a look at this. Then I answered, I am not so miserable a fellow, Trifo, as to say one thing and think another. I admitted to you formally that I and many others are of this opinion and believe that such will take place as you assuredly are aware. But on the other hand, I signify to you that many who belong to the pure and pious faith and are true Christians think otherwise. Now, now look at that statement and think about that for a moment. Here's Justin Martyr talking about he and many others have this opinion related to the thousand years reign. But he says there are many who belong to the pure and pious faith and are true Christians who think otherwise. So there were those who had a different view than what he had. And I know I got this uh, text too large with that. Uh, I think it's really my logo is too large. It needs to be changed. But let me just boil this down a little bit. And uh, we can put all of this in one place. But I and others who are right-minded Christians on all points are assured that there will be a resurrection of the dead and a thousand years in Jerusalem, so there's his, I mean, his premillennial doctrine, which will then be built, adorned, and enlarged as the prophets Ezekiel and Isaiah and others declare. So apparently he thinks that the prophecies in Ezekiel and Isaiah, I suppose the New Jerusalem and the uh, dry bones, etc., and the, the uh, temple, is what's going to be built in Jerusalem for this. So he's got a physical temple 
and he's got a physical resurrection. Just think about it. And the Most High does not dwell in temples made with men's hands. For Isaiah spake concerning this space of a thousand years. For there shall be the new heaven and the new earth. So there it is right there. <laughs> and the former shall not be remembered or come to their heart, but they shall find joy and gladness in it, which things I create. For behold, I make Jerusalem a, a rejoicing, and my people a joy, and I shall rejoice over Jerusalem and be glad over my people, and the voice of weeping shall no more be heard in her, or the voice of crying, and there shall be... No more there a person of immature years or an old man who shall not fulfill his days. For the young man shall be a hundred years old, but the sinner who dies a hundred years old, and uh, he shall be accursed. That's some rather strange doctrine. Now watch this. For as Adam was told in the day he ate of the tree, he would die. We know that he did not complete a thousand years. We have perceived, moreover, that the expression, the day of the Lord is as a thousand years, is connected with this subject. And further, there was a certain man with us whose name was John, one of the apostles of Christ, who prophesied by a revelation that was made to him that those who believed in our Christ would dwell a thousand years in Jerusalem, and that thereafter the general, and in short, the eternal resurrection and judgment of all men, would likewise take place, just as our Lord also said, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but shall be equal to the angels, the children of God, of the resurrection. And he said, many true, faithful, and pious Christians disagreed with him. I think I got a couple of things by Clement. And Clement was believed to have written prior to 70 AD. They say that who that Clement was cannot be ascribed with absolute certainty. The general opinion is that he is the same as the person of that name referred to by Paul in Philippians 4.3. The writings themselves contain no statements as to their author, but in the catalog of contents prefixed to the manuscripts, um, they are both plainly attributed to one Clement, and the judgment of most scholars is that in regard to the first epistle, at least, this statement is correct, and that it is to be regarded as an authentic production of the friend and fellow worker of St. Paul. This belief may be traced to an early period in the history of the church. It is found in the writings of Eusebius and Origen and others. The internal evidence also tends to support this uh, opinion. So let's look at what he had to say. All right, the date of this epistle has been the subject of considerable controversy. It is clear from the writing itself that it was composed soon after some persecution, which the Roman church had endured. And the only question is whether we are to fix upon the persecution under Nero or Domitian. If the former, the date will be about the year 68. If the latter, we must place it towards the close of the first century or the beginning of the second. We possess no external aid to settle this question. But let's see what he had to say, see if there's anything in that. God continually shows us in nature that there will be a resurrection. Let us consider, beloved, how the Lord continually proves to us that there should be a future resurrection of which he has rendered the Lord Jesus Christ the first fruits. By raising him from the dead, let us contemplate, beloved, the resurrection which is at all times taking place. Day and night declare to us a resurrection. I guess he's making all these analogies um, about the resurrection. But again, if he wrote prior to... 68 AD, I mean, prior to 70 AD, as they were saying in 68 AD, that would be uh, a rather interesting point. I don't think uh, that one is of. Here's one Be humble and believe that Christ will come again. First of all, it sheds its leaves, then buds, next it puts forth leaves, and then flowers, and after that comes the sour grape, then follows the ripened fruit. Ye perceive how in a little time the fruit of a tree comes to maturity, of a truth soon and suddenly. Shall his will be accomplished, as the scripture also bears witness, saying, Speedily will he come and will not delay, will not tarry. Uh, Habakkuk 2 3 and Hebrews 10 37. And the Lord shall suddenly come to his temple, even the Holy One uh, for whom you look. Now, why did he use a text about the messenger, John the Baptist, after whose coming the messenger of the covenant would suddenly come in swift judgment? to talk about an imminent coming of the Lord in a very, very little while. See, you're dealing with, with Malachi at that point. And um, it certainly would not fit a later date 
for that to be said if it's written after 70 AD. So I just don't think that that, um, that would work. Well, that's about it. Those of you who hung in there all night to um, listen to uh, some of this, we appreciate it. And I hope that I have given you uh, a few things. The main thing I wanted to do was to show that this dependence on these apostolic fathers is a shaky foundation. And I wouldn't want to build anything on the consistency of their testimony. And if you tell me that just because Justin Martyr said that um, there were miracles, or even Irenaeus, I mean, I don't have to go back to them to hear people say that they can do miracles. All I got to do is walk down the street and have people tell me that that is the case. But the authority of the apostles is going to be the determining factor. And um, we've seen both from the statements of Holloway, the statements of the scripture, and the statements of um, Chrysostom, that these miracles are tied to the coming of Christ. Even though he didn't say the coming of Christ occurred in the past, he said the miracles were long since past, and if that's the case, you can't separate them from the coming of Christ. Well, that's what you, <laughs> that's what you got, Paul. Anything else I don't think, um, you know, was um, worth mentioning that I didn't cover that was necessary. Like I said, the foundation of his whole presentation was Hymenaeus and Philetus. Well, we just dismissed that. And Justin Martyr's comment about miracles and the validity of these, um, these ch early church fathers and we don't even have enough evidence to determine whether um, their words could be uh, even trusted among the many people who might have added more information to that content. And I've tried to answer as many of the objections as I could in um, the time and just you know share some other things with you along the way. So thanks a lot. Everybody have a good night, and God bless you all. Appreciate everyone who's hung in there for the night. And um, but we'll see you uh, the next time. And um, God bless you all. Uh, anybody have any questions you want to throw at me? You know, feel free to do it. I'll uh, answer them later, and um, we'll talk to you soon. So I'm going to check out of here, and I got to get back on this computer so I can do it. <laughs>